So we've been talking a lot about Earth observations from the International Space Station this week, and one experiment's actually about to celebrate a very exciting anniversary, and that is the high-definition Earth viewing. To learn a little bit more, I'm joined today by Carlos Fontenot, one of the principal investigators, co-principal investigators for the project, to learn a little bit more. So Carlos, first off, start me off, where did the idea for HDEV come from, and what was the original intent of this payload? A few years ago, uh, the ISS Technology and Science Development Office found themselves in a situation where there was a space available outside the Columbus module mm -hmm. where the payload had been delayed and uh, the program wanted to utilize that space. So the Science Technology uh, or Technology Office came uh, to me and said, what about we put some cameras out there. What would it take to put mm -hmm. some cameras? So I drew on a little piece of paper. Well, we need a camera, mm -hmm. an encoder, and then we need a, a router. We can put so many cameras in an enclosure and drew in a little piece of paper. And my colleagues went on their way. A couple of weeks later, a few weeks later, I get a call. You are the principal investigator for this payload. We <laughs> are going to build an enclosure and put it outside Columbus. And the design, build, certification, and delivery will be done in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And we broke a record, nine months from conception to delivery. And so what was the real purpose? I mean, it's more than just let's put some cameras on the station. What was kind of the scientific purpose for building this payload and putting it on the station? Absolutely. As you know, the space environment and the radiation in space is very harsh mm -hmm. to electronics. So you may observe from time to time that some of our images have white little dots, those are pixels that are missing because of radiation. And the sensors uh, get the damage because of it. Mm -hmm. So we are studying, uh, you know, we count missing pixels on the images, uh, on the views, and specifically on the view, on the nadir view, we have seen a couple of pixels missing. But we're very surprised because we thought it would be much more. So the enclosure where the cameras are, are we think are partially uh, protecting uh, radiation from hitting these sensors. Okay, and so, and it wasn't just NASA people building this payload. You guys also got students involved, which is always very fascinating when you're a student to say, you know, my, I built something that went into Absolutely. space. Tell, tell us about how you got students involved. Well, there's a program called HUNCH, mm -hmm. High School Students United with NASA uh, for creation of hardware, I believe it stands for. Mm -hmm. And these students uh, participated with our team and they built some of the brackets that actually hold the cameras in place and hold the encoder. So they built part of the little brackets, structural pieces that hold the uh, payload. You can see here the payload. On the right, there is an enclosure. That's the finished payload and those little windows that you see, the cameras are behind. Mm -hmm. And those cameras partially are held by these brackets that they hunch folks built. Very cool. And so this video, so April 30th marks the two-year anniversary yes, of you know, tomorrow. activation. Tomorrow. So this has been streaming live the whole time. And students were even involved with the streaming of this video too. So first off, tell people where they can go watch this right now. And yeah. again, how are students involved in this? Well, you can watch this around the clock at http colon forward slash forward slash eol dot jsc dot nasa dot gov slash hdef. Mm -hmm. You go to that website and you not only see the downlink, but you see the track of the station going over the earth. Oh, so you cool. can tell when the station is at night time. And unfortunately, when it's night, you cannot see much with HDEF. Mm -hmm. But then, as you see uh, the station come into the daylight, uh, there is the picture. Yes. And so you can watch this uh, around the clock. And um, we have sometimes, we have had uh, to get, uh, take the payload off the air for several reasons, and we get calls. You know, there, there are uh, folks in Europe, folks all over the world, and they say, where is my age death? <laughs> now, there's other, Ustream also streams age death, 
and Ustream makes HDEF available to many people out there. Mm -hmm. There is an outfit that builds little boxes that tell you when this station is coming above you and shows you the HDEF images. So there are several uh, companies that have used uh, HDEF as well as museums, schools, and uh, universities. So how, are, how, are school, how have schools been using HDEF with students? It's uh, very interesting. We got a call from our partners in Europe and Germany in particular, mm -hmm. and they were very interested in develop developing uh, materials, curri uh, curricula for the students in their geography lessons. And what better than using live views from Earth and identify those land masses? Now, HDEF has uh, limited capability, but you can control certain functions. Mm -hmm. You can switch cameras, the forward viewing camera, the native viewing camera, the aft cameras, through just a workstation that's connected through our systems, and so you can command the cameras. So we partnered with the University of Bonn in Germany, and we schedule their participation where they can command the camera, so the students command the camera, switch cameras, Very and see cool. the results as they're flying over certain uh, parts of the world that they're interested in. Okay, well, so we're about to hit the two-year mark. How, how has it been going? You, you mentioned you've only seen a couple of pixels. Have the cameras held up as well as you thought? Or are they uh, much better exceeding? than we thought, okay. exceeding our a every expectation. Now, radiation sometimes affects electronics, and we have encoders, we have switchers, mm -hmm. and we have had a few instances where all of a sudden the system locks up. We have not only seen that on the external payload, but also inside the vehicle with our television system. So uh, we rigorously studied what happened component by component, analyzed the, the telemetry, and it was just a latch up, what you call a latch up. And um, so all we did is what you do with your computer when it freezes up. We cycled it, rebooted it, and in some cases, powered it down, powered back up, bingo, there it is. Sometimes the simple stuff works. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's, what's next for HDEV? You know, it's yeah. been two years. How long do you think the experiment's going to go? And, you know, what, what's maybe the next step? Is there going to be an HDEV 2? Well, as I said before, the reason why we're on board is because a payload was late. Mm -hmm. So that payload will be taken into space now with SpaceX 13. That is sometime in uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And when this payload arrives, our HDEF will be taken robotically off the Columbus module, and the new payload will be placed where we were, and they bring it down. So I'm looking at the fall of 2017, year and a half from, from now, more or less, mm -hmm. and uh, we expect HDEF to continue working the way it has been for two years. Now, when we bring down HDEF, or take it off station, we have been looking at uh, any uh, places where we can uh, attach a new payload, build a new payload, mm -hmm. however, there aren't very many places. Yep. We need data, we need power, we need certain requirements. So I'm thinking that rather than replacing the hardware, we may just replace the function because we're putting new high definition cameras. So we may just leverage the function of those cameras and train them to the earth when they're not being used and have that as a substitute or future HDEF. We're working that plan. It's not a done deal, mm -hmm. but that would make sense. Okay. Well, again, the high definition earth viewing cameras marking their two year anniversary now on board the International Space Station been providing some spectacular views and they will be for only another year and a half. So if you haven't been checking them out, make sure you go do that right now. Uh, Carlos, thanks again so much for joining My me. Pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk to you here in Mission Same Control here. and great job with the experiment. We love it. Thank you. Thank you.